And now, princes, governors, and rulers of Babylon, get ready to fall down on your face and bow, cause here comes your heart, your mighty king, Nebuchadnezzar! Woo! This story takes place a long time ago in the kingdom of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful king, and whatever he said instantly became the law. Nebuchadnezzar and his people worshipped many gods. There was one exception, and that was the king's advisor, Daniel. Daniel worshipped one god. The king and his people had seen how Daniel had successfully interpreted one of the king's dreams with the help of his god when all of the priests and magicians in Babylon had failed. Not long after this experience, Nebuchadnezzar called all of the important people in Babylon together for a special event. Thank you, thank you. Now, I know that the main reason you're all cheering for me is because you know that if you don't, I can have you cut up into little pieces and your houses made into a giant pile of manure. <laughs> But seriously, it touches my magnificent royal heart to have such a warm reception. Now, I have commanded you all to come here today for a very important purpose. To present to you your new god, the big golden image. Ooh. But that's not all. Because BGI is new around here, we want to make sure he feels right at home. So I've come up with a little game that I think you'll all enjoy. It's called worship or die. The rules are pretty simple. When you hear the BGI theme music, you simply stop what you're doing, drop to the ground, and worship the statue. But with every game, there's a catch. If you mess up, you lose, and you get thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. Thank you all for playing. Enjoy your new god. And so, every day when the music played, Everybody bowed down to the great statue in the public square. Everybody, that is, except for three people. Shadrach! Meshach! Abednego! Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not born in Babylon and did not share many of the religious beliefs of the king or his other subjects. They were Jews and friends of Daniel, whose home country had been conquered by Nebuchadnezzar's army. We only worship one God, though others may find this quite odd. We're not singing their song. Do 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 do. One day, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were strolling by BGI Square, the statue's theme music began to play. Why aren't those weirdos over there worshipping the statue? I don't know. Hey, you three, stop singing and bow down to BGI. Mm. How about no? What? How dare you defy the king? Don't you know the rules? Yeah. Who do you think you are? We're going to tell King Nebby. Then you'll be sorry. Y yeah, yeah. Hey, Nebby, over here. Excuse me? What did you just call me? Uh, oops. Sorry. Oh, oh King, King Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar! Live forever! Much better. Now, what's the problem? It seems Larry, Curly, and Mo here don't like your new decree. What? I know these men. They're friends of my advisor, Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. How could you do this to me? Bow down to the BGI right now, or I'll have you thrown into that fiery furnace so fast. Sorry. Ooh. Our only God is at an eye. Ooh. We could not bow to BGI. Ooh. Ooh. The King of Kings who reigns on high will never. That's it. 
I've had just about enough of this trio. Bind them up and throw them in. You can throw us in the furnace. Our God, he would not burn us. He will help us along. And into the furnace they went. The king was so furious that he ordered the furnace to be heated to seven times its normal temperature. The king came to the furnace to inspect, but as he approached, he heard an odd sound coming from the furnace. What's this? How can they still be alive? And then, something even stranger. What the? Where did that other voice come from? I'd better take a look inside. How is this possible? Didn't we cast three men bound up into the furnace a moment ago? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I swear I put them in there, Your Honor. Yeah, well, well, then that's right. why do I see four of them walking around in there? What? Who? I don't know, but they look like... Shadrach! Shadrach! Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego emerged from the furnace, all the guards and princes who were there saw that not a single hair of theirs had been burned or even singed. They didn't even smell like fire. Nebuchadnezzar spoke to the three of them. Wow, you guys. I'm so sorry. How can I ever make it up to you? Clearly, you were right and I was wrong. You were right to stay faithful to your God. He must be the real deal. I mean, he sent his angel to protect you from the fire. He saved you so you could continue to worship him and no one else. I'm going to make a new decree that no man in Babylon is allowed to insult the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because there is no other god who could save people like this. And just to make it interesting, let's say that anyone who doesn't obey me shall be cut into little pieces and have their houses made into a giant pile of manure. Well, clearly, Nebuchadnezzar's decree wasn't perfect. He still thought that people should be punished for their beliefs. But as far as we know, nobody ever disobeyed it, so no harm done. As for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were promoted in the king's court. But even more important than their individual story is the promise that God can always help us in any difficult situation. Since that time, many people oppressed by slavery, violence, and sickness have been helped and healed by remembering stories and the lessons they illustrate, like this one. Whenever we feel trapped or unsafe, we can remind each other that God cares for us. We can work together, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, to recognize the freedom and safety that God provides for us. Like them, we can come through these experiences without the smell of smoke, without any scars, because God, good, is our only real life. <laughs>